Be the right club. Be the right club today. Yeah. Johnny, that's better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most. Expect anything different? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the No Laying Up live show, the No Laying Up podcast. Wherever you may be consuming this medium, uh, my name is DJ Pajowski. I'm joined by my good friend Chris Solomon. He was out at Augusta all day. He's going to have all kinds of observations from the most famous golf tournament in the world. We're going to have all kinds of other guests rolling through. We've got all kinds of segments planned. Uh, but first, we are brought to you today by our good friends at High Noon. High Noon just got a whole lot bigger with High Noon large cans, 24-ounce cans. Solly, I was sprinting around the Whole Foods yesterday. I got the last case of tequila. I was all jacked up about that. And Cody's like, no, 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 we're doing the big cans ad today. Big can time. Big cans. Uh, are you afraid of calling it big cans? It's okay. They're called the big cans. <laughs> I'm just, you know, you know how this happens. People clip the audio. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get AI. Now they're going to clip it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now available in vodka, seltzer, peach, and pineapple. The And the all-new tequila, seltzer, lime, big can. There you go, Cody. Grab one. Get out in the sun. These things have reclosable lids that allow you to sip at your own pace. They're perfect for a day at the beach or out on the greens. Solly may need you to attest to some of that from the nice weather down there. Find them at your nearest convenience store in the single serve beer and hard seltzer set ugh, section or at high noon spirits.com. High noon, suns up. So I feel like you never hit the slogan there. High noon, suns up. We are also brought to you today. I don't get that copy. This is different really? copy, man. I don't get the suns up copy. This they, is must da- they must have known daddy was coming through the hosting chair today. <laughs> Uh, we are also brought to you by our good friends at Foot Joy. We're going to hear more from them later. No more joyful week in golf than Masters Week later in the show. We are going to be celebrating our moments of joy, brought to you by a partner who knows a little bit something about joy, Foot Joy, the official to- shoe, glove, and rainwear partner of No Laying Up. And listen, for all the people in the comments, no, he's not. He is mourning, but he, not so much that he had to take the day off work. We are going to bring in our third chair today. TC, I know it's been a rough day for you, my man. Uh, you know, just the highs and lows this week. The birthday, obviously, uh, uh, you know, some tragic news today about your dear uncle Juice. Uh, but other than that, you know, how you doing? I'm hanging in. I'm hanging in. I, I First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody. <laughs> Uh, I got probably thousands of messages today. Phone calls, emails. It was hundreds two minutes ago. More, more than your I'm birthday? Ch- yeah, more are coming in. No, I don't tell people about my birthday. People knew about the juice today. And it was, uh, man, what a tough one to wake up to. Sure. And, uh, just, you know, so I've been, been kind of hanging with some friends and trying to, yeah, I mean, even Augusta <laughs> was recognizing it there. Uh, but yeah, it means the world that everybody, everybody took time out of their day to, to just say thank you and, and pass along some memories. So. I, I truly cannot wait to see where this bit goes. It's at its natural conclusion. It's been, it's been oh, a it's decade not, now for, that this bit has been running and I just, I don't know where we're going from here, but I can't wait to find out. Solly, I feel like I've been rambling my face off here. It's hard <laughs> doing the hosting duties, isn't it? No, it's good. It's good. I just, you know, a proper welcome to you. I hope you had a great day out at Augusta. How, how are things going over, over with you? It was a dream come true day. I've always wanted to do this. Uh, I have, through co- various career choices I've made, uh, need to spend a lot of time in front of a computer and a phone having people yell at me uh, while watching mo- major championship golf. Uh, it was nice to leave that in the media center and walk around and watch world-class golf uh, on just an incredible, incredible, incredible landscape uh, in an un- unbelievable environment with all the patrons and uh, the energy out there. It was fantastic. I feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose trying to get caught up on everything, but uh i was had my head up all day and not looking at my phone and i was watching uh, some amazing golf went out followed the scotty rory xander pairing i figured no matter what happened in that group we were going to learn something from that one today we know knew we we're going to talk scotty tonight knew we we're going to talk rory xander was probably going to get a cursory mention tonight and uh got to see all their golf up close and personal today and had definitely had some some takeaways from it 
I mean, if you got to watch Scotty play 18 holes at, at the Masters, today, like I don't know what else really you have to like catch up on. You're like, you didn't miss anything out. Like, that's it. Well, Bryson's like, back. Well, like, sure. I, I missed that. I'm sad I missed that. I mean, Let's, there's, you know, there's what? all these fluctuations on the leaderboard. You're, it, it is really weird. One of the weirdest things is having to rely on leaderboards out there, uh, like finding a leaderboard for score updates. And early on in the day, they don't have like the leaders up there. They keep the four major champions and the reigning US Am champ at the top of the board for like most of the day. So you're like, you're all right, Ryan Fox and, uh, you know, Eric Van Royen are doing stuff. Is anybody else? Like, you don't, you have no idea what, uh, like, uh, you know, any of the, some of the other big names are doing. So it's, it was really uh, a bit of dark information wise out there. Well, let me let me go to a guy. You know, I know he doesn't even look at leaderboards. You know, he's just stuck to his process. We're going to start. Let's go around the horn. Story of the day. TC, first draft pick. I know it's been a tough day for you. So we'll give you, we'll give you the first pick. What What is the story of the day for you here? At story the first of the day was, was Bryson. Uh, I had a weird feeling. I, told, I said it in the preview pod on Monday, and then he was part of my picks uh, on Wednesday in our happy hour. But Bryson, just, you know, we'll see if he can keep it going tomorrow. But he's weird he's a doofus he's he's just insufferable sometimes but he is a content machine and i've missed him so 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 much and uh it's good to have him back bryson dechambeau with a 265 at uh in round one uh, one bogey I, listen a lot of people are gonna make that joke but it is it was a joy man you want to talk about feeling the joy watching bryson out there tc we're we're laughing our asses off about like the him taking his hat off at 18 and then not realizing his hat was already off and try to try to further doff his cap was just that's the kind of stuff we've been missing man we're we're gonna have uh kbv spent his morning following bryson so we're gonna bring him in in a little bit and uh and talk a lot more about him uh but solly let's let's go to you number two number two story of the day what do you got Scott Scheffler, um, you graduate. I think a, a graduation from Scotty today into Scott because it was just an adult, grown-up round of golf. Maybe when he becomes a dad, he'll drop the 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 the, the final tie. I'm, I'm wondering I, if he will. I proclaimed that this morning before he teed off. I'm I'm not I'm not doing I'm not doing Scotty anymore. I'm not participating in that. We're going with Scott Scheffler uh, from from here on out. It was it was just world class stuff that you know I don't need to see every round in person, but every now and then you go you need to see one just to see the ball flight, see the window it's coming out of, see it compared to the other two guys they're playing with. Like get an appreciation for him getting it on the right shelf on the back part of the ninth green with the wind oh. whipping off the right and hitting it. Dude, that was sick. Totally different trajectory of the window that Rory hit it out of, and Rory's got eaten up by the wind and it went to the middle of the green. Every time he gets it, so I I picked Scotty, and I'm I think I'm rooting for Scotty to win this week. I think it's it's gone from the worst thing that can happen in pro golf to maybe the best thing that can happen in pro golf because I think we are seeing somebody make a leap into true greatness, and he's got to have a second major to kind of get that ball rolling. And it's like investing in Apple is what the feeling was out there. I've never felt less emotional. It's the complete opposite of rooting for Spieth. It is. It's just like, all right, well, he's a, he's short-sighted there. He's going to get that up. And oh, he actually hold it from the bunker. That's actually okay. Uh, oh, he missed short into 13. Oh, it, it, it holds up on the hill. He's definitely getting that one up and down. He played that shot in like under 10 seconds when it was his turn because he was so he was he was completely aware that he was going to get that one up and down. He's probably going to stuff it in there on 16 as well. Throws one down the elevator shaft on 15 from the top of the hill. I mean, there were people just laughing in the crowd. When, after he hit a shot in the 16, the stands, the group of people in the stands that also saw him drop one down the elevator shaft on 15, just like started laughing when he stuffed it again. And he was 600 par walking off that green and it could not have looked easier. I was just so, so, so impressed to see it in person. And I'm glad I picked that group today. Sally, if, if he's... Uh... You know, if he's Apple stock, I'm Steve Jobs, then baby. <laughs> you know? That's true. TC, That's true. Are, he's controversial. Garage, you, you you quote do got to hand it to him every now and then, <laughs> even if the if the path to getting there isn't always the the smoothest. Solly, the uh, the the shot into nine was where you know him and Rory were in similar spots, and those were radically different shots that they hit, and it, like that was such a litmus test today. That shot into nine off of a little downhill lie with the wind swirling and back pin, and I mean Scotty's was like not only did he get it to the back shelf, he got it to a spot where like such a great spot to putt from back right there. Meanwhile, Rory comes up short and didn't never even had a chance of getting back there. It looked like a little boy. <laughs> And I've never done this before because you can't. I usually take notes in my phone, but I actually took a notepad out there today and, and wrote down a bunch of notes. The thing I started for the ninth hole was this shot is pure artistry. There is no range you can practice this shot. 
with, you know, the wind was kind of into off the tee, so they couldn't get all the way down to the bottom of the slope. The ball was hanging below his feet, and, and the wind was coming in and off the right, and how far you wanted to draw it with it was going to determine how far it flew. It was just like, dude, one, I don't want to hit any of these shots. Like, it looks so freaking hard out there. And just to watch him flight one uh, in that trajectory window, Xander went – it was a complete disqualifying shot from Xander. He went up the Which, walkway. Real quick, on, on, on the Xander note, I'd like, to, I'd like for us to start calling him Alexander – or Al, I'm tired or weird, of like or Weird Al, as you said. <laughs> weird Al, it could be like <laughs> similar to like the the whole Scott Scotty thing. Like I think we need to go the other way with Xander. Of like, yo, you're you're Al or Alex <laughs> or Alexander. No more big Xander. Al, big Al Shoffley. Uh, well, it, his the thing about Scotty shot in a nine two was like it was like six inches away from like taking the slope and going down to about five feet. Like that was it was just awesome. It was just like. So many sh- we've talked about this a ton. Everybody talks about this a ton, but there's just so many shots out there that you can't practice. And it's like you either have this or you don't. And we saw a lot of that from Tiger this afternoon, too. We can talk about him. But um, again, just to feel all those elements, I- I'm sure it-, I- it was well documented on TV how windy it was. But it's kind of one of those things where you're kind of like, I mean, is it really? And you go feel it. It was insane. I mean, there were people's hats flying off by the 18th green and roll- blowing up the hill towards the clubhouse. J.C. Sneed style, like it was some of the tougher conditions of a of a tournament that I've attended in person. I know the scores were relatively low. The pins were pretty benign today, but uh, dude, it was freaking intense out there. It was a weird one. Didn't quite know what to make of it, right? Because you, you kept here, like you can see the trees just like blowing oh. like crazy, right? And I, so I'm watching it, and I I texted you guys. I was like, God, this afternoon is going to get so hard. Like this is going to be Ian awesome. Baker and then Ian Baker Finch is like, Oh my God, this place is just ripe for the taking right now. There's <laughs> birdies and eagles flying everywhere, which like to an extent, I guess there was. But I I, I don't want to make so devil on you know one shoulder, angel on the other shoulder here. Don't want to make too much of this as one round. But also this felt like totally encapsulating of the last like year as far as like Rory, Rory and Scotty and watching those two back to back was exactly what you said about the shot on nine. The shot on 15 was the same thing, right? Where the, those guys are both hitting the same shot. Scotty just drops it down there like that Bryson uh, IBM commercial and Rory hits kind of like a poofy spinny doesn't really know which way he's trying to work it kind of shot. And, and it just... So I'm curious what your takeaway was uh, from a Rory perspective, watching watching him up against, uh, you know, y- your guy, Derrick Henry. That's yeah. I mean, it it, it was it was interesting to me how uh, I just noted this on the front nine that he gave up two like Scotty gained two shots on Rory on the par threes on the front nine. Like when Rory can't use his superpower he like he's losing shots right i I, mean, I guess as i'm doing the math here i mean scotty got lucky holding out of uh you know from the back bunker on 12 but scotty played the par of threes three under today and rory played him one over or no even i think he played him he birdie 12 right rory birdie 12 i, he did. I forget uh, yeah. so I mean, he gave him three shots to to scotty when he couldn't use his driver right and th- there's only four holes where essentially where you're not using your driver so it is, you know, it, it everything about this place is exactly like we've said. It's about precision with with the iron play and hitting the right shots. Rory did hit one great wedge into 14. That pin was really sneaky hard today, downwind, just over that front knob. And he drove one way down there, used his link to an advantage, and hit a high ball up there with proper spin and made a, a birdie on that one. I was really impressed by that. It wasn't it, – it was just mediocre from Rory, maybe even average. I don't know. I'm not even sure it was mediocre. It was – um, you know, not a disastrous start, not a blitzing start. It doesn't look like a guy that's going to win as of standing here right now. It still looks like somebody that's just kind of hoping the ball is going to go in. He had some bad putts on the front nine. He had a really bad putt on the 16th hole. Uh, unfortunately, you know, when it looked like he was going to, you know, when he was kind of vibing a little bit at that point, got a great break on 15. But I mean, again, and he looked a lot better than Xander did, that's for sure. But anybody going up against next to, to Scotty, I still think Roy's going to top 10, but uh, you know, I. When he, that could be a stick your neck out bet. When he goes I out and the like, preview. like air mails two green with a wedge, oh, so and bad. then and then pars thirteen and fifteen. I'm like, fuck this! Like, get get <laughs> out of here, man! Like, go, go like put somebody else on the screen. I'm good. Yeah, we might you need know? to tap. We're gonna do a little segment throughout this this week where we're uh, we're calling in some people from the bullpen for some late innings. To come in, throw some high heat. We might need to get Neil in here, uh, you know, Friday afternoon, get a little temperature of what the block party is uh, is feeling like this week because there were some some bleak moments. Which I, yeah, I, Neil, we were we were texting Neil and, and Cody today, and Neil was like, "Yeah, the caterer didn't show up." Oh, he's God. like, "Wait, you're getting the block party catered?" Yeah, that's disgusting. Like, like I thought this was supposed to be about grills and community and camaraderie. <laughs> 
and and you know yeti's full of beer and he's talking about food trucks and and high-end blaming the, blaming the service industry yeah. it's just not what we're about i i you know first round is very much incomplete right now so i don't know if we really have i don't know if we can have a third story of the day but if i was if i was making a vote I, i'm throwing a, a a vote behind the pro yeah and what, and what he was doing out there late in the day playing with the cat uh you know coming down to 13 really like needing to decide whether they're going to finish or whether they're going to mark and putt tomorrow gets a wedge up and down from the middle of the fairway chooses to lay up there from the fairway hits a little nippy wedge in there and then caches the putt to get get one back after bogey and 12 uh that that's a true like gonna make dinner taste taste really good type of thing uh I, i'm just stoked for him i know he's got a massive monkey on his back with with all the major stuff hasn't been playing particularly great or, or hasn't at least been putting up very good finishes the last couple weeks months uh and then gets paired with tiger woods so i i feel like this was a this was a, a pretty good litmus test on on how he was feeling out there and it was awesome to see him answer the bell so pumped to see what Which, he does in the morning sorry people are we have a a ban on you tweeting about him yeah well just anyone that's yeah. on a hot streak okay. um you know i'm yeah. i'm the cooler so he's on he, i come in he's on a great run i didn't get to see much of it and i just i'm not gonna say anything just not gonna say a word about it just gonna let it just gonna let it unfold let it all happen a couple think other... on the pro the pro real quick couple backstopping incidents with the cat mm. gotta wonder there a little bit um i took some flack too for saying hey that's a comfy pairing that you know some people were coming at me saying, oh, they, you know, like playing with the cat isn't a comfy pairing at all. Like you got everybody in the world watching you. I think Max likes that. I think he likes the moment. I think he I think he genuinely like feels inspired and, and gets him up playing with the cat. And I think he proved that today. I think that's exactly right. I I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. A um, couple There's other leaders. Oh, Real ahead. quick on that, teacher. There's something again. This is the first time I've ever walked a tournament round at Augusta National, but there's something a little different about playing at the masters i would think with tiger just because there's not that many people on the grounds here like it's not a massive you know massive massive crowd and there's great viewing spots everywhere and it just the way traffic flows it's not the same like buzz that follows yeah. it it's not the same like you are locking down this side of the golf course everyone's sprinting up ahead as soon as tiger figures out uh you know holes out i've seen that at the memorial i've seen that at bay hill i've seen that a lot of places and it's just not the same kind of crowd uh, that turns up to watch a golf tournament. So it's not the same level of distraction, I don't think, here, weirdly, than at, than at other tournaments. I also don't think, I mean, Max is also not like a 22-year-old kid anymore, right? Yeah. Like, he's been in a lot of, he's played a lot of golf tournaments. He's played with Tiger a bunch. He's gotten, like, you know, he's talked to him behind the scenes a bunch. He won his tournament at Riv. I know they, like, have talked a lot. Like, Max, is, Max has been on the pack for a long time. Tiger's been doing all kinds of stuff behind the scenes. Like, I, I think they talk a lot and some of that starstruck factors is, is probably gone a little bit more than people realize as well but uh a couple uh, other one other story from today sally speaking of cooler the master masters.com and the masters app was super glitchy and slow all day today and i just uh -oh. you you went and toured that yesterday did you did you mess something <laughs> up in there too? i asked too many questions about how it was all happening i must have messed with some settings when they were showing us stuff but yeah, i was disappointed i tried to get back on to go catch up on some uh you know the every shot and there's a ton of shots missing in there i wanted to see bryson shot into 15 which was supposedly one of the shots of the day and that wasn't it and uh on the website but uh yeah i i'm that's unfortunate. That's a, a rare, a rare, a rare L. It is KBV compared it to uh, the Louis C.K. bit about Wi-Fi on the plane not working. Like, <laughs> it's insane that this technology even exists. But as soon as you take it away from me, I'm very, very, very upset about it. But uh, that's that's pretty much the sentiment. I think that's I think that's right. Uh, a couple other names, just so family members don't get upset. TC, we've got your guy Hoygard, five under with three to play. Daniel, yeah, we got a lot of hoes up there. Ho <laughs> Daniel Ho and Hoy. <laughs> Daniel Willett, I know that that made our friend Patty uh, quite chuffed and inspired to see his countrymen uh, hang up a little 68. We mentioned Max. Foxy hit one of truly the worst shots I've ever seen a pro hit today on 13. <laughs> uh, just five hopping one into the creek with a wedge. That's about as bad <laughs> as it gets. I didn't uh, see this. Cam Davis, oh, it, was, it was solid. It was awful. You would have you would have been jumping through the screen because a because you would have been so furious that he was playing well in the first place. Totally, <laughs> probably because he, he felt like he the didn't... Fox bit that I hate Brian Fox. Wow, he, yeah, he that would, would be just like you to ask that question. <laughs> yeah, was he, he trying to lay up that got on the shot? field? 
I don't no, know he what he was trying to He do. had like a wedge. It like yeah, was just trying was to like awful. hit this like little shallow nippy one and just like laid six inches of sod over it. It was it was sick. Would recommend people go back and watch that shot uh, on the Masters on the Masters website if it's up. Uh, Cam Davis three under. Tyrrell Hatton three under. Corey Connors continues his strong form at the Masters. Ben on. Neiman TC, I believe that was one a block you were on. Uh, I was on the Neiman block. I was on the Cam Davis block too. Little Willie Zalatoris uh, gives one back at the 18th. Gives a couple back coming 17 in. 17 and 18. A really I, nice. I nice can't channel it like TC does. I can't channel it to be like, I was on that Corey Connors block. Where were you guys? The absolutely <laughs> stunting on you guys. Absolutely. Like you look you gotta foolish, have it TC. You, don't. you, you gotta, say you gotta a word it. about Corey You gotta Connors. believe. You gotta believe. I, I will say Zalatoris, awesome eagle on 13. That was yeah. cool to see. Thank you. TC. I think I'm glad lot. that Zalatoris is is in the mix. I'm I'm hoping for big things from him the next next couple of days. I I mean he was up on the board all day. I and then it couldn't yeah. figure uh find out what happened. He bogeyed 17 and 18. I did not see uh how those unfolded, but that was uh otherwise we'd be, you know, we'd be we'd be talking about that one. That was a he was had to four under at one point. Yeah. Only uh yeah, only other guys I only other guys I want to mention, uh, Ludwig playing his first major round ever is, uh, again, can't be said enough times uh, how wild that is, is two under through 11. Oh, and uh, two under. Through that's 11. right. And and your guy, Tommy, with a little 33 on the front and gave one back at the 10th. So just that's a, you know, you guys mentioned it on the preview, but no Finno on the bag, battling some health issues this week. And uh, so wishing him all the best as he, he tries to get round one in the house. Uh He's Solid. just to keep us in the clear real quick. You skipped yeah. over P. Oh, sorry. Oh, the, that was, I was getting that word from the master's headquarters. They told me to skip that one and just pretend <laughs> like that was, that did Randy happen. picked him. Randy was, was bullish on P Randy this picked week. Him? P stinks. <laughs> what does picked him mean at this point? That, that just means you named him, <laughs> I, I think, There's in the like, preview at some point. What was, what does play well? Like, like he was like eight like nine guys the... in the field and they all get mentioned in the previews. Oh yeah. He's, he's my boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad you picked Neiman to play well uh, the, this week, TC, the top five player in the world. <laughs> the top uh, five player in the world? What what rankings are you? I he's going, going off golf. Here. He's going distance, he's, per, yeah. distance, distance per shot, per Ricky. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if they played Doral, his distance per shot, Ricky went way up. Solly, we've got a bunch of uh, a bunch of kind of not seen on TV stuff that we're, we want to get to from you. I think, Cody, if, if you got it up before we do that, let's go to uh, our friends, Titleist and Foot Joy. We've got our, our moment of joy segment. Let's let's get to that next. Uh, this is, you know, you've seen the the uh, the Foot Joy campaign with with Max feeling the joy flying through the air. I think this was their their idea for us was like. Let's let's kick it off with just you know it doesn't have to be very producty but let's just get a a, a a moment that really made you happy. Uh, I'll kick it off first. A lot of directions I could go. I've obviously got my Brewers hat on. I could talk about the Brewers kicking the shit out of the Reds the last couple nights. Uh, I could talk about Neil. Uh, a true moment of joy, I think, calling Rom's live team Lesion Thirteen. I think it was <laughs> no Lesion Twenty Three. Well, lesion Twenty Three. That doesn't roll off the tongue quite as much. Uh, but that that really really got me. But what I will go with instead is actually a, a Titleist related one. I got some new wedges. I got the uh, the raw finish on my SM Tens, and we were in Scotland uh, last week mm. getting some sea air going, and the sea just absolutely like sped up the process of getting these things nice and rusty. I haven't done this since I was like a, you know, 12 year old kid. And you, you find like a old wedge in the lost and found at the golf course and, you know, leave it in a bucket overnight or something. So these things are going to be absolutely prime for the golf season. I, I can't wait. That was just, that uh, made me those, really happy looking down on those. Those things look like they have iodine poisoning. I know, <laughs> no, it's exactly right. Uh, TC, what do you got? Moment of joy. Yeah. A lot of different directions we could go here. Um, you know, a ton of different directions. But first things first, we woke up this morning. And I challenged the, the Masters meteorology people on the live show last night to a <laughs> duel. And they were predicting an inch and a half to two inches of rain. And I just said, hey, that's not what my models are showing. That's not what the not European model is showing. That's not what the HRR is showing. That's not what the GFS uh, 3.0 is showing. All these, sure enough, 0.59 inches of or inch of rain uh measured at craig airfield just down the road and that was after a second you know like the the kind of last storm that came through there so uh there was 0. 0.56 as of 7:53 this morning and then uh some negligible 
uh, almost immaterial drops fell later in the morning. But uh, I just want to say we rocked them. Uh, I think it brought me a lot of joy to know that the that the course is is relatively dry out there. We're gonna can I, get. Can I ask you, TC? Who do you think spends more on meteorology? Like your at your money through the app or the Masters? Well, I, your yeah, budget's I, huge for this. You got to admit. Again, that's that just shows that you know it's but kind of a, it's kind money? of a quotient. Yeah, it's kind of an efficiency <laughs> model, yeah, right? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, all I'm saying is you know they they, they overstated it by like 300, 400 percent. So, uh, we, listen, we dodged a bullet. We rocked them. Course should be dialed for the next three days. Looks really windy and uh, a little bit cooler tomorrow, and then looks gorgeous on Saturday as well. So there's a lot of kitty litter out there, guys. A lot. Like it, it bodes well for the cat, I think. Uh, you know, as he enters into, into into that part of the golf course, like around 16, there's just so much of whatever that gravel is they pour out uh, in the muddier areas. TC, a hearty congratulations on that. Thank Sorry, you. Uh, bring us home. Foot joy, moment of joy. Uh, you know what? Honestly, the the feeling that made me uh, feel like I was flying through the air, like Max in the commercial, was Tiger's chip into eight, uh, eleven today, um, which was really, really, really saucy and really proper. But I'm going to go a different direction with this. Um, as much as he is a goober, and I don't like him, I still <laughs> he still brings me joy. He had some great quotes at his press conference. He said, "I'm just learning to be myself and continue to be okay with what happens." And from my perspective, what's been really nice and helpful for me is doing a lot of content on YouTube. As crazy as it sounds, it's been really awesome to see how I can affect a lot of people's lives, junior golfers' lives, middle-aged men, even they're coming out shouting, thanks for the content, appreciate what you do online. It's pretty cool to see that transformation and change. I don't know. I have a new perspective on life with that. New perspective on life with that. Uh, that's I just, be, I, that made me happy. That's going to be a TC's obit. People really appreciate what he did online. <laughs> People have said that to me before. <laughs> TC, we love you on Twitter. Uh, Bryson also said he's, he's trying, he's not trying to do new stuff. He's not trying to move things forward or, you know, really like reinvent the wheel. He's just trying to do the same thing every single day. And that seems like kind of a, a sea change in his head, right? He's literally playing new irons this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Different irons that. than he played last week in Miami, brand new irons. So I don't know what that. he's talking about. He's got that Larry Brown's crank. Yeah, we, we got a whole Bryson segment we're gonna do. Yeah, later. sorry. I'm, glad, I'm, glad, he's, I'm glad he's making you feel the joy, though. We we love that. That was great. All right, Cody. Let's get into the 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 main event today. This oh, is no. our our Solly reporter on the ground. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm I'm I keep getting these phone calls all day from this set. <laughs> was it seven six zero seven zero six seven zero eight? Whatever the like Augusta area code was. I'm like, oh, I know this is Solly called me for those stupid fucking phones. <laughs> uh, like I've I've let this go to voicemail, and he just kept leaving me voicemails about what he was seeing out there. So, uh, Cody, can we please play the first? Play the first. <laughs> he voicemail. looks he looks like one of my colleagues at the station. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be so Bryson dumb. is three under through three using something called a crank driver. It's not a joke. A crank driver, a long drive driver, and we're still debating technology. Check in later. Cheers. Uh, I, I think we're gonna get to. I think we're gonna get to that one later with KVV probably. Yeah. But Cody was not surprised by this at all. Cody Cody uh, subscribes to Bryson's Patreon. I think he does all all the Bryson updates. He's like, of course, he's been Bad playing guys. this driver for years. He's been playing this driver for years. He was so proud of it. I overheard him telling uh, another media member about this. Like, yeah, what's new with you? He was like, well, I got the crank driver in play this week. I got the crank driver. It's uh, you know just under forty six inches, forty forty five point seven five. I think it is. But uh, you know, long drive driver. You don't see a lot more of those out here he was so excited about it honestly i i would chat that's a true like challenge him challenge him you go hit that fucking driver and take the lead at the masters <laughs> and then you, you can say whatever you want i fully support it cody voicemail number two please this is so dumb champ champ chris solomon calling in here from the front line just important to say scotty chef has poured in an eight footer on the second hole he butts like that he's gonna win by four also roy stinks see you later cheers <laughs> I believe uh, Scotty sh quickly missed a putt right after that on number three, didn't he? Did he have another good birdie? He did like miss three? a short birdie, of course. I'm the cooler. Even when I don't have my phone, I find a phone to be able to be the cooler. But that, oh, that like, was the moment. How many phones are there out there? Like, I know um, there's the ones off 11. I have a map, TC. I scouted it out on a map. I, oh, here it is. I don't know. Uh, I, I went I went to the, to the map, and I circled where all the phones are on there, and I just, you know, you just got to be aware. It's kind of like just 
looking around a room looking for the exit i had to look for the nearest phone uh, where that would be if there if there's something about to pop off that was the moment though i honestly was like dude if there was a prop right now to bet scotty to win by four or more i would do it because if he, he's pouring in like winding eight footers like this that he did on the second green it's donezo over if if you guys like the scoops callahan bit that that's going to continue <laughs> with, with voice <laughs> voicemail number three this is where things get good Champ, champ, Chris Allen, I'm calling in here from the Y. You won't believe what the scene on the fifth tee. Greg Norman waiting, waiting on the ropes, just sitting there, waiting for Roy McIlroy to show up, just like he did yesterday, according to reports. Wearing his black shark hat, and he had on black foot joy cleats, like he was looking like he was getting ready to play. His pants looked painted on. I think I saw the third leg. Check in. We will check in later. Clear. <laughs> he had a black hat on today? He had a black shark straw hat on, and he had black foot joy cleats on. Like we, wow. The debate is over. Can you wear golf shoes? To a golf tournament, yes. You have a range can. finder on him, and guys, range this was are sick. I I support doing that at golf tournaments. I had uh, uh, somebody come up and tell me yesterday. He's like, so Norman like was out there like being really awkward with Rory at the practice round yesterday, like walking up to him on five, like on the ropes, like trying to get his attention almost, like being really weird. Sure enough, I show up on five, and there's the shark just like hanging out there on the ropes, like almost desperately trying to get Rory's attention. Like, you know, he's turned around talking to people, but as soon as Rory walks up, he like is looking at him and staring at him awkwardly. And it was just the weirdest scene. It was just I, like Rory never looked over and it was awkward. I didn't think it, like that much of it until like a later on scene, but we can get to that one eventually. That's a true. Hey, like, Sally, we're the person yeah. like, come on the pod and debate me. Debate me. I'm right here. <laughs> I'm right here. You want to talk about me, it? Rory? Yeah. Sally, we're the, uh, we're the Pinkertons and, and, you know, other people just coming up to Greg and saying, like, thank you for all you do. I like, appreciate you. Like, really no like negative, no negativity whatsoever. Yeah. They just, they love it. I thought I about going up to him, and just, hit, yeah, just hitting him once with like, hey, thank you for ruining the game, uh, professional game of golf. I really appreciate it. Just so he couldn't say again that nobody came up and said anything negative to him. Well, I think the Greg Norman stuff continues with our final voicemail, Cody. Oh, no. So. More news from the front line. You wouldn't believe it. I would. Let's start that over. <laughs> <laughs> More news from the front line. I wouldn't believe it. I didn't do it with my own two eyes again. Greg Norman exiting the putting green, walks up to the ropes between nine and ten to try to get Rory's attention. Has a shit-eating grin on his face as Rory walks right by, does not acknowledge him. Uh, we walk up to the 12th tee. John Rahm and rules official Stephen Cox getting into it over pace of play. John Rahm was exasperated, annoyed, yelling at him, looked like as they're walking off the 12th green, off the 12th tee. <laughs> Keep your eye on this story. Crack on. <laughs> Yo, are they going to stroke that? guys tomorrow? You don't have any idea how awkward it is to do that voice when there's like people waiting behind you to use the phone booths and everybody can hear everything you're saying. Uh, so, like, yeah, we're on 12. Like, so, anyways, 10. Norman is like standing by the putting green, sees that um, that Rory's going to walk up. So walks over to this rope, just like stands there and has this like shit eating, laughing grin on his face. Rory walks by, doesn't acknowledge him. And then like just turns back around and goes back to the putting green. Like, it made no sense for him to do that other than just to like fuck with Rory in some way. I, I honestly couldn't believe it. I was because I, I was making the turn towards 10 and I kind of walked by him and I was like, what is he doing? And I went and followed him just to, like, see what he was doing. And I was like, dude, what the hell? This is so bizarre. Uh, and then made my way back down to 12. And, yeah, Rom took forever to hit that shot, as a lot of guys did. And uh, a rules official from PJ Tour, Stephen Cox, is standing down there by 11 green. And he's got – I assume he was timing him, or I don't know what it was. He's, he was monitoring the situation. And as soon as Rom hit the shot, he took off to go catch up with him and it says something to him. And Rom just, like – Hell yeah. I mean, just super animated and like points down 13 fairway as in like probably saying we were waiting on them or whatnot, but they were way behind. And uh, I don't know if they got put on the clock or what, but that was that was quite a scene walking uh, from 12 T to to the green. God, what a, what an underrated storyline for tomorrow. Like, I think they should send a message. I think it's going to be super slow tomorrow. They're, they, they got guys going out early and then back out, you know, obviously for the second round. I think they need to send a message with pace of play tomorrow. Hell yeah. It's also worth, worth noting, honorary non-competing invitees who are present. It's a lengthy list. Greg Norman not on the list. That is, of course, a ticket he has bought, purchased on the secondary market, I believe. Yeah, he said he tried to uh, uh, third leg Greg Jr. said that his father had tried to go through the, the official channels, get one. Obviously, he had to be there to support his live players. And, uh, you know, he bought one on the secondary market. So... Cool. Yeah, I can't can't imagine why they wouldn't want him there as he's 
sprinting to the rope line to accost uh, one of the tournament favorites. Uh, Sully, anything else you want to add from your, you know, maybe, maybe things you wouldn't have seen on TV today before we bring in KVV? A couple very brief ones. Uh, Zach Brown Band out there um, from McLaren. That that version of Zach Brown Band. Like uh, like the Zach, like, okay, Zach not the Zach Brown Band. Correct. Zach Brown, yes, the McLaren. Yes. McLaren uh, principal, CEO, whatever you like to call it. He was out there. Uh, that was a fun one. Um, after uh, there's a guy, an anima, animated guy next to me on the uh, 10th tee after Rory and uh, Scotty tee off on 10, Xander's getting ready to hit. And the guy just like looks up on his tippy toes, see who it is. And he goes, ah, screw this guy and walked away. Like he was standing near Ted wa waiting for guys to come to roll up. And he didn't even want to stick around to watch Xander uh, come out. But those I, are my, I, I stand with that guy. Alexander. That's Sorry. right. He's weird. Al. <clears throat> uh, all right. Well, awesome. Guy, I think the voicemails are a hit. We might need to keep that going tomorrow. <laughs> I think that's I think that was a great success. I can keep them coming. I mean, that yeah. was again, it was it was very, very, very awkward. Do you want me to go get tracked down KVV? Yeah, I think that would be I think that'd be great. Thank you for uh, thank you for your service. We'll talk back with you in a minute. I'll be back shortly. All right. This guy stacks saying saying Stephen Cox, third leg Greg, stroking guys, etc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah possibly some freudian stuff going on from the boys uh, DJ, I, I uh while we have a second here i just like to to say how much i appreciated adrian moronk oh the yeah Cleeks wearing all black today <laughs> there are a couple of the news yeah a couple i consolidated a couple twitter questions uh we can just burn one of those now while while we're waiting but i, I believe it was from uh, Vinny P, will TC apologize for Moronk embarrassing the cliques today? I know he looked like he was playing with a heavy heart. I'm sure you're, you know, one team, one dream. Everyone was probably beaten up about the OJ stuff, but uh, he, he did seem to be decked out in all black uh, and also just absolutely played like shit. So I, I don't know if you have any comment there. Yeah, he, he certainly did play like shit. Um, the thing that really bugged me was the fact that he had mismatched cliques logos on he had a the cliques have alternate logos or are you just well, talking about different colors yeah yeah just he had the white the white logo on his hat and then he had a gold logo on the the, the regular the cliques gold on his on his on his shirt there uh i was the thinking there maybe they to go for the black glove i think today was the day maybe he would have done you know the purple sure. uh you know because the, the, that, that's kind of the cliques alternate uniform there kind of their their uh what their color their color rush uniform <laughs> their city uh, connect uniforms but seemingly all anybody wants to talk about are jason day's pants that's true i'm not going to be participating I, I made my uh you know my stance known on that i was canceled many many times over the head with a hammer uh so i just i think they look stupid i think he's a fraud i I won't be participating, but I recommend everybody else can make their own takes. They showed uh, a they showed a close up of him on twelve T, and like the, legitimately, the pants are causing pace of play issues because they're so baggy. <laughs> I keep coming back to uh, uh, I uh, every time I'm out TC, they they drag me back in. If this was Minwoo Lee or or I don't know someone cool, I'd be like, dude, I get it. Hell yeah fashion statement jason day's never done anything cool like this is not this is such fake juice and it's just absolute like faux outrage harvesting it's just it's disgusting speaking of a guy that is just a fashion trendsetter kvv we're bringing you in i hope you had a great day out there how, how are things i'm doing great guys i was one of those middle-aged men who was thanking bryson uh for influencing my life uh and so i you know the, for the middle-agers uh, i hope they you feel heard KVV, love, thank you for everything you do online. <laughs> well, thank you, TC. I, you yeah. know, I I love to get into it with the with the haters. It's just one of my favorite things. It's just I feel it makes me feel uplifted every day. All right. Well, we're not we're we are not going to be haters on the big golfer today, who is who you spent your your morning following. I want to hear yeah. all about that. Let, let me start. What impressed you most? Seven under, opening round. He's never had a top ten here at the Masters. What what you know? What stuck out to you the most from today? Honestly, Deej, it was his short game, uh, which I think is a little bit uh, maybe underrated in this whole sense. He did not play amazing on the stretch from about, uh, th you know, three to nine. He hit it in the bunker on four, uh, hit a really good bunker shot from there, hit it over the five and hit a really good bunker shot and got up and down there. Uh, hit a not a great uh, shot to the bottom of six, had a pretty good lag putt, made a, a par there. And I was just like, man, if Bryson is going to like get up and down from everywhere, that is pretty freaking hard to beat because he's just absolutely nuking the ball uh, down. I was like walking with uh, 
with Gabby Herzig of the Athletic, and I said, let's go behind 9T because this is like one of the best shots to watch on the whole course because it it just looks like the ball is basically going to touch the moon from back there, just so high up in the air and drops straight out of the sky. And I just was like kind of impressed. And he obviously went on a big birdie run in the second half, but I kind of feel like the short game is, is an underrated part of his his thing now. I feel like this is kind of like going to the doctor's office and like no changes in insurance just need to confirm like he is still using this the single length uh wedges like the six iron length wedges around the greed correct i i believe so i would like cody to fact check that though because i was a little surprised when he said that he'd switched irons uh and wedges in his bag uh coming into this week and and of course the crank woods <laughs> and and stuff, which we'll get to you gotta, you know. you gotta tell us tell us about the crank well so i'll tell you what i had a, a he on eight he absolutely nuked the shit out of a drive that went over the walkway, or excuse me, head right to the bottom of the walkway. And I was walking past his mom, and she was like, that's the Craig driver effect. <laughs> I was like, wow, I want to write this down. Like, they, the whole family is into the crank. It's a family uh, affair. Yeah. So I didn't know a lot about the crank. Uh, did a little bit of reading about it uh, since. You know, typically a long drive kind of situation. <laughs> Uh, We're talking maybe, about crank. Maybe we should all get on crank. I didn't, and <laughs> stroking and third legs. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's got like a, a fire symbol on the face. You know, it's certainly something that long drive people use regularly. But he listen, he's had it in play for what eight months now. He actually put it really right before the the uh, fifty eight at Greenbrier, and he said at the time, this is kind of the kicker in my story that. He said, man, I cannot wait for April. So uh, he's been thinking about this week for quite a while. Didn't say, well, can't wait for my live Miami. He said, can't wait for April. A uh, lot, lot of jokes about like the, you know, the par 67 stuff, including from, from George truly on the front end. What's the, uh, appreciate that, that you know, <laughs> the, uh, the length, like I, we saw that video of him, like just just hammering balls like next to the quad from a couple years ago where he's just sweating and VJ's like standing there next to him just kind of like VJ is all of us yeah uh well, yes of course thank you Cody this this one I, I truly underdog underscore golf cannot recommend going and watching this one uh enough it is it is so funny uh how does the length like holding up from a couple years ago I mean is he, he's clearly like still absolutely nuking the ball but is it yeah. does it look the same what's what's changed what's the same I will say that there are, he's not like straight up the longest person. I mean, he hit it to the walkway on eight, which is if you've seen the how high the hill goes up on eight, it's hard. Christian Lambrecht hit it like 20 yards past the walkway. Uh, so, and Jake Knapp hit it into the walkway. So, I don't want to say like Bryson's his length advantage isn't probably quite as dramatic as it was, but his iron play is like a lot better and his putting is still like world class. So, he, it's interesting to see he kind of felt a little bit chastised by all the criticism of the par 67 stuff, which I had seen, read some quotes with this. Like, I don't regret anything. Like, it's all learning experience. But today, in the presser, he was like, yeah, I, that was a mistake. I, I shouldn't have said that. And, I, you know, I make mistakes. I'm human. Uh, so, I, you know, I felt a little bit of that's starting to creep in there, TC. I, I don't know what this means for your relationship with Bryson. Uh, maybe you need to get deep in the YouTube channel and, and really kind of think about uh, how you feel. No, I've been celebrating it. I've been. Hey, oh, thank you. Saying all week that this is I'm glad to have him back and I've missed him. And he's, you know, I don't like he's like he's just a necessary part of the scene. Mm -hmm. Right. You have Having to have a big him. golfer. Yeah. Well, that's kind of my point, I think, is like Bryson at his is always been a little bit odd but when he's really good at golf those two things going together like him his oddness and quirkiness and like freaking ridiculous golf are a lot of fun to be uh, i think a part of the game i think truly like i've been thinking about this all day or at least like since this afternoon and if you told me on you know at the beginning of the week like hey draw up you know put your christoph hat on and draw up like what do you think the most fun sunday duel would be like obviously personal reasons, like it'd be great to see Max win a major. That would be unbelievable. But like non-emotionally, I'm like, man, Scotty versus Bryson, like yeah. that like sincerely might be as good as it gets, man. Like that, that is so fun. I, I even I'm if we don't so end up getting that on Sunday, if we get that next couple of days and then Bryson fades or Scotty's wife has the baby, then you know, at least we got it, right? Yeah. And then something else happens. But uh I don't know. And and him. Him taking his hat off and then tipping the tipping the bill of the cap 
I believe our guys trying to take Kumba back uh, off. Barry had that video. That that's like that's that's good good stuff, man. As he said it, it was kind of the Billy Payne fake handshake, kind of not, you know, from the uh Jordan Spieth, Danny Willett year. Uh Cody, you got my favorite photo pulled up. This is this was me all day, man. Just like just staring up at, at the eclipse, just absolutely in absolute wonder. I can't believe we get to we get to play a party to this this amazing golf from the big golfer. He's back. It's just that's you know truly joyous stuff. And and speaking of being back, I think we got KVV back after some brief technical difficulties. Yeah, I think I got disappeared like in Harry Potter or something. I'm not sure like what happened there, but I'm back. Uh, the haters and the losers are trying to throw all kinds of technical difficulties at us tonight, they, but it's not going to stop. Of disappeared. I heard that, I heard Chris Como got disappeared briefly from the premises. Yeah, uh, earlier today for uh, for posting some swings on instagram from the range and this guy's had to beg for him to to uh, be, be let back on the property it sounded like my my gal jessica hadwin who's a recent trap jar guest got also punished for you taking some pictures on property of the par three and that uh got twi- put in twitter jail at least so. wow yeah. here here's what i'm gonna say okay augusta awesome traditions smell the pines azaleas rules spoken and non i'm, I'm cool with all that Sounds great. If you're going to do all that stuff, then please just put Scotty and Rory in the featured groups. Like, what are we doing? That was so fucking stupid today. I'm I'm clicking around from like, oh, God, I think he's on like the three, four, five feed now. So let me hold on. Let me go or four, five, six, whatever. Let me go over here. Okay. I guess I can't watch him for seven, eight, nine. But like, I guess maybe I can pick him up again here later. Very stupid way to watch golf. So I, I could not be more out on that. And I and I've yeah. I would love to speak to a green jacket personally about that decision. Well, I can make that happen, Teach. Tim Thank Fincham you. was here, TC. We I was as a little group scrum with Tim Fincham. Mm. I should have put some of those questions to him. I know you're gonna be a little little green jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was uh, a little green yeah. jacket. A little that was in the that was in the Jack Gary player uh Tom Watson thing, which I have a, a, an important report to to share. Which KVB uh, little... Macy's kids section real quick, jacket. one <laughs> One other thing that I'd like addressed by them is the the Masters doesn't need to be selling the hats with the no. skip it, skip or it you don't know. Skip like that. that's that shit is embarrassing. Low red and they need, they need down to market. Stop. That is she, so beneath them. Cal, Cal <laughs> is upset that he and Ken Green aren't getting a cut of that because they feel like they invented the skip it contest. Which I don't there. think they and did invent it because they claim there was they another did. guy that that somebody had out today or uh, yesterday to hit the shot. And he was playing with Crenshaw the original time, and I guess that's mm. who invented it. So, it's a fa- real Facebook situation with Eduardo Saverin here. Is that who? Yeah. If you invented the skip shot, you would have. You would have uh, had the skip shot. Uh, KVV, before we get you out of here, you got to tell me your boy Gary players out there on the first tee yes. uh, with TC's boy Mr. Nicholas. Uh, they're they're yucking it up. There's got to be some gems from Barbara the, from Barbara the ceremonial the opening tee shot. <laughs> Uh, you know what? There was fewer gems from the opening tee shot than there was like from the presser afterwards. I mean, the tee shot went, you know, kind of about normal. I thought Jack actually looked better this year than he did uh, in previous years. Maybe he's on that Gary uh, player fitness routine. Gary did make sure to sort of comment on that. Uh, so you could just eat less. Everybody should eat half of what they should. And Jack was like, oh, it's so easy for you, Gary. But uh <laughs> In the presser afterwards, uh, Barbara, you know, he's telling me to take Ozempe. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty good I, Jack, by the way, KVV. Underrated Jack from you. You know who did a Jack today was uh, Tom Watson. Tom Watson really? did his Jack impression. So apparently everybody does a Jack impression. I don't know where mine ranks in this, but uh, the, the very funny kind of moments, I think certainly unintentionally so, uh, because Gary can't hear all that well. Uh, and that's, I'll tell you what, the setup is not great in the um, press room for the olds because sometimes people don't speak into the mic and so they kind of catch a piece here and there half of this and so you know who i'm out on by the way the media members who take pride in not speaking into the mic I agree. I'm, this, I'm so out on that I, vibe. everybody knows what's going on in there everybody knows all the mics the are pointed sideways dj yeah. I, I crank that mic over to my mouth to make sure that the Just olds, make it- yeah, <laughs> olds can hear me well <laughs> but so the a very nice young reporter uh he, he asked a question he said do you guys have any influence on who might get to uh be the next ceremonial starters and do you sort of feel like that should be part of your legacy that this role and had in picking that and none of them clearly could like hear the question but were a little confused and tom leans in well i'll tell you about the my legacy is uh you know on the first tee i gave all this money and we did a lot of great things and and then jack started talking about legacy 
And then Gary, you know, the, remember the, about golf Saudi. The, the question is about choosing the next ceremonial starters. And Gary says, you know, I'll tell you what's about legacies. Winston Churchill was the greatest leader in history, and they're calling him a racist. They're throwing <laughs> things at his statue. So that should tell you what legacy is all about in the world. I'll tell you that. And you know what? We're, we're running out of water in the whole world. So I don't know. Like, what are we going to I was, I was absolutely dying in the presser just thinking about you can ask, it's like a Gary Claire wind up machine. You can ask him anything, and you're going to get some incredible quotes. And then at the end, all three of them sort of sat around and talked, and they were just basically, I could overhear them as Fincham was kind of holding court there. And it was like the awesome grandpa meeting over coffee where everyone is just talking about World War II stuff. Like I can hear Tom Watson being, well, you know, Nagasaki, they dropped a bomb and they just killed everybody. And Jack is like, oh, what about FDR? And Gary's like, like his freedom is dying in this country. And I can see Watson going, what do you, hey, Siri, what year did FDR die? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's so good. That hey, what my what highlight of the week for me? Say so last far. night. So Watson just just kind of ended the dinner last night. Yes. So oh, that was the other great moment. I, I think we'll write a, we'll see this in our Sunday story. But apparently, Watson stood up. At the, he asked Redley if he could say a few words at the end of the champions' dinner, and he said, "You know, isn't it all nice to be back together again? Shouldn't we try to figure out a way to make things work and and enjoy each other's company again and and be united?" And Tom Watson said that it was pretty dead silent, that nobody like nodded in agreement or that it, it just, and then Ray Floyd got up to go and that was the end of the champion's dinner. <laughs> so kind of like a huge awkward downer. Ray Floyd said, I'm going to the strip club. Tom, Tom Watson straight up was the cooler at the champion's dinner. Apparently though, it's TCU said the summer. That's weird because he's got to have a lot of fans in there for some oh, of those totally. younger players. Yeah. TCU you said that, uh, that, Mickelson wasn't talking again. I, I saw Faldo uh, sort of said that to Sky Sports. Yeah, I guess uh, Faldo said that on Sky today. Yeah, so. that Mickelson just keeping to himself. Uh, Mickelson finally say. did media today. He hadn't done anything. Uh, did you know, say anything of note? It kind of seemed like he was feeling the joy out there a little bit. A little bit. I mean, he's, you know, he's enjoying his time here. Oh, it's so spiritual for me. I just want to you know, be back. Well, KVV, if you see uh, Tim Fincham tomorrow, will you, will you just get him to, to start opining on Big J? Like how how that's gone i yeah i didn't he wasn't taking he kept like deflecting questions because i was going to throw one in there about how do you think jay's doing like you think he's uh you know is, your hand is going well yeah. really crushing it <laughs> is he, is he a train you driver the, or is it, you know, the time I, or I don't know but i i guess by tim's estimation though he's probably covering up for a lot of the shit that tim did so allegedly <laughs> covering his tracks so, a little bit yeah. allegedly yeah. So, yeah that's exactly right uh all right kvv did you file a story already you writing a story I did. Already? where are you at yeah I, I filed right. a story i think we got jordan reading it right now hopefully uh you know some you'll you'll get a chance to read it before it goes up make sure it's i'm not libeling bryson in any way i will say i look i, I know tc we've had this discussion about bryson and, and randy likes to tease me about you know how Bryson wants to be Mr. Beast, and now anytime I feel a little empathy for the guy, he's like, "Get out of here! This is ridiculous." Bryson was a was a little bit likable today. He was, you know, he, he wanted to feel for him a little bit. I I don't want to say he's like chastised, but he did sort of. He, he's I've been through some stuff, and I don't want to talk about it, but it's it's hard, you know. And I'm 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 figuring out who I am as a person. I figure out my family loves me, and my friends love me no matter what. So you know, I, I look, I like it when Bryson's good in the game. I he. I yeah. like it when he's goofy and we can talk about it. And it's good content, but when he's really good at golf too, that's when in the sweet spot. I, Amen. Here, here. I agree. KVV. Thanks, man. Uh, everybody Boys. go, uh, I probably in the next, I don't know, in the next 30, Hour, 40, yeah, minutes, 40 minutes, that'll yeah. be, uh, up on no laying Uh, KVV. Well, I'm sure we'll talk to you tomorrow. Cheers, man. That's great. Uh, TC, I got a I got a segment I put in here for you. I know how much you like to go oh, down the leaderboard. This is you. gonna be this is gonna be called our subtle dogs segment. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you can't go anywhere without seeing that subtle dog logo, as you as you know. This is just a we're just gonna a quick as we as we have Solly pop back in here. Quick shout out of some subtle dogs, some guys outside the top 20, some rounds people may not have noticed. I know you've usually got a lot of these. What what do you got tonight? Yeah. Um you know what? I'm drawn to Austin Eckroat. Mm. I think uh, mm. kind of a weird one. He started out with a double. He was three over through, I think he was, gosh, he was three over through uh, five Perfect holes five. today. Yeah. He eagled eight, birdied 11, birdied 13, kind of a bad bogey on 15, and then doubles 18, but shot 74 with two doubles. I think that portends well. He played well. got that round out of the way. I think he's going to start 
kind of running running downhill tomorrow. So uh, Austin Eckrode is my my subtle dog today. Woof woof. So you got a subtle dog you want to nominate? When I was putting this together, this was a fact, but I don't know if it remained a fact as they finished the round. But just after you know, TC just railed on Tom Kim uh, for not deserving of being I was in the pairing. You'd go there, yeah, not oh, being in the on. pairing with Harmon and Kepka. Uh, they're all uh, he's uh, Kim was leading the group as of when I put this together, but uh, they're all tied through through eleven holes. So just want to give just a subtle dog shout. What happened to the blow pig? By the way, I totally missed that he shot yeah. forty on the back nine. Yeah, the uh, blow pig. Uh, he got exposed on. 15 in the wind he made a double uh he had a couple drives today that Damn honestly man, glad i do this a yeah. good, good buddy of ours uh mr ramble called it a uh an optimized queef mm. uh that he's hitting off the tee and it's it's uh it's really it's basically worse than the drive on 18 at uh at lacc cracked Much a couple worse. people in the in the dome out there too without four calls i must keep, add, it, so. keep your head on a on a swivel out there if you're if you're one of the patrons i'm lucky you told us to reach outside the top 20 which is which is hard because there's a lot of guys at t7 yeah i don't know that was just under. loose, I loose. Know. use your best judgment just shout out i still don't know what's going on with victor hovland i could not have been more surprised to see a name at four under par through i think nine right? holes at yeah. one point out in the day he did fall back and fit shoot one under par but all right he's doing it he's doing something uh Maybe some more on him as the week goes on, but uh, there's, there's something weird going on there. I, I will quickly shout out a guy TC mentioned in the uh, in the preview pod, I believe, uh, and that is Lucas Glover, a guy you don't really think about, even though he is a major champion, and a guy you don't really think about with with majors. Seemingly, his game does fit well here, but one under, nice round. Probably not a lot of people talking about Lucas Glover tonight, so I'm going to nominate him as my uh, as my subtle dog. Uh, anybody else you guys you guys need to nominate? We do have a we're going to do something different this week. We're going to, we're going to, you know, we're getting, we're reaching kind of the, that like top of the seventh type of area here. It's clear. We're not going the distance. We're going to need to bring in some fresh arms to get us, get us three outs. We got men on first and second. We need somebody to come in with some high energy. Uh, so we, we've got a call to the bullpen coming right after this. But before we do, we are also brought to you tonight by our friends at foresight. We've been watching a ton of the coverage all week. Uh, you know what? You truly can't see any of these guys out on the range without seeing the little the little gray box right next to them. The Foresight Sports GC Quad or Quad Max launch monitors. Uh, they're everywhere. Solly, I, I you know I don't have, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure you've seen them all over the range. Well, that was something that really stuck out today. Just watching all these shots and watching balls land. Just you know, I'm watching the guys tee off on the fourth hole today, Scotty and Rory, and watching how you needed to float a ball. You know, from a, a elevated tee, just barely over a bunker to a back right pin, and watching Scotty land it just far enough, and Rory not land it far enough uh, to and fall back into the bunker was just like how dialed these guys get on distance and the effect that you know the the climate has on the ball and the, the way they use these quads in practice rounds and all that. Uh, I just wanted wanted to 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 say I I want to get to this level. I want to learn how to use this thing to, to where I can really get my distances this dialed. And you know, I I find myself asking these questions like how are they. How are they this precise? The shot into 12, how do they get that number right? Because they spend a heck of a lot of time with measuring devices like the GC quad and like getting actually dialed in this stuff. And it stuck out a lot to me today. So, you know, I'm not a data boy, but this is making me However. be a data boy a little <laughs> bit. Okay. I've been, been playing around with it here at sea level at home. Uh, yeah, maybe not non-optimal conditions. And it kind of helps me figure out how my game is going to travel as well. So uh you know we're going up to got some trips planned this summer and i'm like all right what's how are my distances going to travel here what is what is i'm a big distance control guy right Deej, what, what, how far does my eight iron go what's There's my no more there? no more important question quads and quad maxes were everywhere on the range because foresight is the benchmark they set the standard for how all launch monitors are measured learn more about them at foresight sports.com f-o-r-e-s-i-g-h-t sports dot com foresight sports thank you again to those guys for the support so easy to use <laughs> there we go so easy. <laughs> you, got oh, your yeah. launch, you got your launch monitor ready for the takes to see see what the uh, kind of launch angle they're flying out at Let's see what kind of velo our next participant is uh is bringing tonight i i i i had very clear parameters i said come in get us three outs i want three takes your three biggest takeaways from the day we're bringing in the big 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 right hander of course, of course, it's big Randy. Randy, greetings, my man. How are God, he's you? He's wearing his Terra Ediat. Hey, guys. 
Nice little golf course down in New Zealand. How are we? We're doing great, my man. I hope you had a great day watching the first round of the Masters. I asked you to, to come with your three takes. I want to hear first take number one. Uh, first take. We, we can eliminate a lot of dudes. You know, Justin Ray put out this. That you, you guys know there's nothing that gets me going, like a nice cliche. Uh, something that we, dudes. Something that we learned. Big hit. Every, can't win it every on year. Thursday, Randy. <laughs> you can't win the Masters on Thursday, can't guys. But you can lose it. And so my guy Justin Ray tweeted out, uh, Justin Ray Golf, great follow on Twitter. 26 of the last 30 Masters winners have been within five shots of the lead after round one. Uh, and, and expanding that to all majors, 90.5% of men's major winners since the year 2000 have been at five shots or better to the lead after round one. But we're not done with round one, Randy. So but whoa. we aren't done with round one. That's mm. exactly right. Uh, TC, we got we got guys, though, that have work to do. You know, uh, Brooks Kepka might want to find a couple birdies tomorrow morning to complete his first round. JT, I think we're eliminating you. Cat might need to find one coming in. DJ, Colin Morikawa stinks. I'm off of him. God, that warms my heart. Wow. The dome golfer. So it wasn't going to be a domey day, right? You're you're un unhooking the trailer. You are no longer towing him around. I'm done. I'm done. You're selling low. Jordo, you're done. Unless you know he could he could have some magic tomorrow morning. I think Jordo <laughs> might be dead, guys. <laughs> what a flip that was. <laughs> well, you never know. Uh, so I thought that was I thought that was interesting. All right, Can second big one, takeaway. One more take in there, just that that has. Yeah. I, I meant to say this around Scotty. The one that the best stat I think I saw all week was was it two, since 2005? I don't think the favorite has won the Masters. And again, just I think like puts into perspective what Scotty's doing even more. Like every single person on the grounds if is like, who do you think's gonna win? Oh, it's probably Scotty. Probably Scotty. Probably Scotty. And he comes out and plays bogey free today. So Randy, your stat reminded me of that. Please. Well, also, Randy, your stat also makes it like twenty six the last stat. thirty I, I, winners. I will say this is Sorry, Justin Ray's stat. stat. The stat yes. that you brought. Twenty six <laughs> the last thirty winners have been within five. That's without yeah. a dude like Scotty out front too True. Like that makes it even more terrifying like maybe yes. it's three this year maybe it's four you know a, a little a little bonus tweet people can see on the screens this was scheffler's first career bogey free round at the masters and he's the third reigning world number one to open the masters with a 66 or better dj shot 65 and one in 2020 and three lg third leg greg shot 63 in 1996 and just finished uh second runner off close one? one for him there's no yeah, way he could have lost I that know. one I know, I know. Uh, take number two. Yeah, take number two. one out. Easy pop fly to center field. We, that's exactly what we needed. Runners sure. do not advance. And listen, I, I know you guys have covered a lot of ground. I've, I've been watching. Great show. Um, we, we, I, I wanted to add a little context around the big golfer. You know, tomorrow, I, I truly believe tomorrow is a, a big day for the big golfer. It, unbelievably, I was kind of digging back through his career here at Augusta. Um, Today's just the fourth time in 25 career rounds that he shot in the 60s, in the 60s. Uh, eerily reminiscent, I think, of 2019. Bryson went out and shot 66 in round one, but ended up uh, shooting 75 in day two and, and limped to a tied for 29th finish. So he's going to play late tomorrow. He's He's... He's going to get, hopefully, TC. Hopefully, the models are good. He's going to get some wind. I, I just yeah, think models it, look consistent all day. It, it's a big so. day for him to follow up that 65. I, I think, and he doesn't have to do anything spectacular, but I, I think anything from like 70, 71, even, even par 72, I think is a good day, uh, but should be fascinating. I, I think all eyes deserve to be on, on the big golf for tomorrow. One, one thing I'll shout out for Bryson today in his post round was. He's talking about how how much you need to learn this golf course. I'm talking about humility and not trying to be the smartest guy in the world. Like he 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 seemed to admit that a little bit of like you know what like yeah like I needed more loops around this place and I needed to learn stuff. And uh, Luke Curtinian had a, a good tweet about just how how much of a mess he's made on three, four, and five over the mm -hmm. last few years. And he's I think he, you know if he cleans that up now ev everybody was making a mess on five today. It was so hard it looks so like but hard. so um, hard. You know, a couple guys were blowing it into the stands long right, which was disgusting. But, um, but yeah, I think if Bryson can get a good start tomorrow, 
he should be kind of home free. I think. Just real quick, stick your neck out. I'm selling Bryson right now. I think this is this is the this is the top. This is the top right here. Take your profits. Uh, sustainability models say number one in strokes game putting today. Um, I'd be stunned if that continues uh, for four rounds. I'm I'm selling. What is what does selling mean? He You're saying he's not going to win. He won't win, and I I don't think he's going to be like a serious contender for it. Wow. It's a great round. Right. I'm happy for him. I have, he makes I a lot have of top sense. five oh, stock just, on him. Would you yeah, sell that's, that? I'm, I think, uh, man, I, I would it's sell. Interesting. I'm gonna sell. When I are his he's... exemptions up from his? They gotta US be. Open that was 2020. Yeah, US it was. Open? Yeah. Okay. So we're we're coming up. You know, we're coming up on it. But uh, as always, like another year. Big finish at one of these tournaments kind of yeah. yeah. does a lot for your world ranking. So, uh, big. That was a, I think a line shot to the third baseman. Nice defensive <laughs> play. Yeah, loud, 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 loud out. Loud. I need you. To, I need you to get this guy. This next guy. <laughs> Let's leave no doubt with this next guy. Uh, guys, listen. We we just got to talk about Scotty. I, I know you guys covered him. Not much to add. Unbelievable oh, round. Oh, I I think you know. I, I've taken a lot of heat about my comments several years ago about Scotty oh, not two. passing the oh, eye two. test. And I and it, and today really caused me to look in. You know what do you, what do you guys do when when you're confused, when you're directionless, when, when when you need inspiration? What do you turn to? What do what do you guys like to do? That wasn't that's a big question there, big. Jeez, kind man. of a tough question because well, I, I can turn, I turn to my uncle. Who's yeah. with us, <laughs> well, TC, I'd invite you to maybe you know grab the good book and 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 start reading some literature there cody if, if you will I, I found a quote today that that i think is what i need to start living by uh this is from matthew uh chapter 5 verse 29 and if thy right eye offend thee pluck it out and cast it from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell and what essentially guys what matthew is talking about here uh, that the eye test just isn't gonna do it when when we come to somebody <laughs> like Scotty when 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 he's on a higher level it, it just I cannot trust my eyes I, I was living a life of pride and hubris and so I found this message today and that's it I'm, I'm I, I I cease to you will not hear me talking about Scotty the eye test some things aren't supposed to make sense we have to leave room in this in this world and in this life for miracles for wow and um I invite you guys to join me there Randy were you uh wow. speaking of the eye test were you and Cody working off of different translations <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> uh, I sent him a picture I, I I'm going off of the King James version uh the LeBron Bible LeBron. So I'm not sure he respects his career <laughs> yeah. I, that's on me. I, I may have sent my, my guy Cody uh, the, the wrong exact translation. But you guys get the gist of it, okay? It, 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 the, the Bible is very explicit about the eye test. You, you do not need to trust your eyes. You just go with it. Scotty feels like such an inevitability. Um, just super impressive. I was looking slider and you just you froze me at the top of the zone there. That's exactly that's exactly what we needed, Vic. Thank you for for hopping in. You you uh, you're gonna be locked in tomorrow. I believe you're on the show tomorrow, right? I think I'm I'm scheduled for the start. Yeah. I <laughs> we're a little worried about this arm. Um He's an but yeah. Yeah. Horrible pin location on 16 today. I did want to say that. Uh it, it yeah. did dawn on my Deej. I, I was glad you agreed with me. We need to put a bunker right in the center of the green on 16. I think it would make that tee shot so much more interesting and fun to watch. I, I I'll leave truly, you guys with that. without a bit wholeheartedly agree with that. Big. I think that is that's a phenomenal idea. That green's so big and it's just it doesn't feel it's not interesting to watch. I think that was one of those takes that you you know what? I, I tip my cap to you. You were on that block for years. Years and years, and I said, Randy, you're a heretic. This is stupid. Go away. I'm having fun. Tiger almost made an ace. And today I was like, this sucks, man. Everybody's just stuffing it in there. This is this is boring. boring. The yeah. front, the front left one is good. Like that, that has a lot more element to it. This one's just this didn't really do a whole heck of a yeah, lot. Today. That's that's not so I, I will ride with you. Pop bunker in the middle. Shout an homage to to the captain George Thomas. I mean exactly. Randy, enjoy your night and enjoy what looks like a new domicile as well. Looking, looking great, oh, man. I'm guys, glad to we're see making progress out of, yeah. out of the Unibobber's yeah. cabin that you spent <laughs> the last couple of weeks in. Uh, Randy, I'll see you out in Brentwood uh, <laughs> for, the, for the memorial on Sunday or Monday. Uh, all right, couple, couple quick things we're going to get to before we go. These are these are quick Twitter questions. Tyler Munson 
fashion corner, please. I'm glad you asked. TC, we had a lot of spirited back and forth. We obviously already mentioned uh, your guy, Moronk, decked out in all black today. We saw a little bit of the uh, ceremonial first tee shots. I, let me start with uh, let me start with my favorite outfit of the day today. All right. And this might surprise you guys. Uh, Cody, actually, you've favorite. got my least favorite app. So we're going to go with oh. that one instead. <laughs> This is Sergio. You know, TC, you you said you could not get enough of this. I think he made that doesn't like, mean it's good. <laughs> it just means I couldn't get enough. I think he text. looks like a, a sandwich artist, maybe from like 1993, looking very subway. Uh Shout I, out to I, your guy Jared. <laughs> my guy. Uh yeah, just this is awful. This is not what we're doing. This is not who we're this is not who we are. This is not what we're about. This is an insult to the entire Masters organization, Masters tournament, all the green jackets. That was after take, he rinsed it on 11. Take this Put away. His, his wedge. Yeah, I thought it was it was garish. Uh <laughs> maybe maybe a tribute to the I guess the Green Bay Packers long time like 50 year equipment uh manager it, retired today as well. <laughs> It looks more uh, like fanatics, like the Australian guys. Yeah, you know, may, maybe it's maybe he's he's got some issues with the University of Texas athletic department, and he's going down to Waco. Mm, which obviously, Bob big. Bob Bob Griffin and Jared they they were friends as well from Subway. So you know, all that. I don't know. I just he looked awful. He did a reveal this morning as well at his that. rental with Angela, Mrs. Garcia. Uh, in their rental house and they were both wearing matching stuff which makes it 10 times worse guys Any, i'm just gonna get out in front of this this was my favorite outfit of the day i i, I unironically i fucking i loved it i i think the fireballs <laughs> need to be doing weird sh shit like this uh i he was immediately I'm recognizable on the course out. i don't really even know why but this was not even like hilariously working for me i loved this fit I, i'm holly I'm you on this uh uh, I got several several DMs and tweets today from people uh, who spotted you out on the course. Uh, they said the they they saw the blueberry on the telecast. I'm not even and, that blue uh, today. They, is... they said you were wearing all blue, blue hat, yeah. white and, white and blue shirt, and then blue T shorts. Today was, was a hard it was a hard day to pick uh, fashion stuff because everybody was wearing all blue. Everybody had just like very muted stuff. Usually people bring the noise a little bit more for around one of the masters. I think so. that leads us into the blow pick. <laughs> that's right? a good, that's a great point so uh, please take it away yeah the blow pig was talking a big game huffing and puffing <laughs> uh threatening to blow some of these fashion houses down after the last couple days <laughs> said you know wait till you see he wore this on what tuesday he said wait till you see what i have for tomorrow of course wednesday comes out which much less egregious in my opinion i kind of like this, actually. this yeah that's good and then you're thinking what's he going to come with for thursday and he wears just like this weird peachy i mean a fine boring. a fine outfit but you know, very yeah. very forgettable yeah so i don't know blow pig kind of you know uh talking a big game and then not really backing it up there so i, I didn't get a chance to get a screen grab but i loved rory's pants today the, the, the kind of not really lavender purple. but kind of purple pants in with the purple belt that was that was sharp I'm glad you mentioned that because that leads me into to my favorite outfit of the day. I think that he's taken kind of inspiration from what Rory was wearing. He's taken a little bit of the good stuff of what Wyndham had. That's my guy. Big tone had a had a great fit on today. He was he was really going for the lavender. He had kind of like a tie dye lavender type of mm. look with the, with the good hat and good pants. Mm. Just, that's a hell of a look from Big Tone. That that he's pulling it off. I absolutely love it. Uh, and he played pretty nice. I think he was under par today. So. Yeah. You know, way to go, way to go. Poo poo in the potty for big tone. I That's think honorable mentions just I don't think we have uh the the uh visuals for him, but Hatton's shirt was god awful. Yeah, bad. Um Jenny McCarthy's then, shirt was also yeah. Bad. Uh I was gonna say Lee Harvey Oswald's shirt was was like one of the worst I've ever seen. Yeah, so not good. Uh what other Twitter questions here? Wait, uh, we we have to do the do we the main culprit of the worst fit of the day like twitter is definitely worst fit of the day i mean jay day that? right right yeah oh yeah, yeah. sure i mentioned that one. we already kind yeah, of mentioned that one kbv yeah. was on yeah, if you okay. have anything to add you'd Which, like i guess he's i guess yourself. it's going to be 10 times more egregious tomorrow like the sweater that he's wearing tomorrow is here's insane. what i'll say you hopefully you're getting paid a lot of money to do this jason i hope you're hope you're doing well it needs to be enough that you don't have the DeWalt with it like if you're if you're going to be like a fashion yeah. statement you can't have a yellow DeWalt thing on the hat right you you Pro golf outfits are kind of supposed to be a billboard for all your ads. You got to you got to think that kind of stuff through. 
if if the baggy pants are coming back, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna be four years late on it. Okay, this is not. You can't wear those kind of pants in the wind, and it's just it's not for me. I don't. If that's for you, that's great. Don't cancel I us again. Respect your career. I, I respect your career if you're gonna play golf in those pants, but I will not be partaking. It's exactly where I'm at, Sully. If, uh, if you're trying to make a fashion statement, you can't also sell power tools at the same time. Mm. Get the fuck out of here, man. One last call out. I think Victor Hovland's shirt. It looked like. It looked like Georgia O'Keefe was painting very, very vaginal flowers hmm. on a black canvas, like a, a dark canvas. And then he had the he had these like white patches that looked like NASCAR patches for his his sponsors because they couldn't put the sponsor logos on the color of the shirt. It, it was a it was awful start to finish. Very, very sexually charged show tonight. Uh <laughs> What else we got? A, a Mart. What insane things? I want to hear. I want to hear one from each of you guys. What is Bryson going to put on his champions dinner menu? Uh, pigs. Uh, I would say it's cut up hot dogs and mac and cheese. That's for sure. Making it in. <laughs> what if he just does all like pork, like ham, bacon, pork belly, pork tenderloin, just all the all the pig. All he needs day. to. He needs Whole something. Hog. Something with bacon, and he needs to be in there cooking it shirtless uh, for everyone for the dinner. God, that was epic. People don't. And talk he has about an Oregon smoothie for dessert. Guys, what did what did Cam Smith do today? I I haven't been able to look that up today, but I've not heard any discussion. Under, maybe. He's one under. Okay, yeah. all right, that's good. Yeah, swing totally. looks super laid off. Didn't it look weird? I, I don't. Yeah, I'm was. not a swing guy, but it looked like he's like so far across the line further than he used to be. It just eh, didn't. No, pretty thanks. clean round though, like bogey free except for a double on twelve. He birdied two. He birdied six. Birdied fifteen. Um, so, Sally, I'm, I want to ask you this one. This is from the Nate eighty nine, and I, I think this is probably referencing Scotty's mm. shot that stayed out of the water. Mm. Do the Harry Banks on thirteen get as much hate as the ones on seventeen at Sawgrass? If not, should they? If you did not see it, Scotty hit his second shot into the thirteenth. By all accounts, should have gone in the water and somehow hung up, and he has a, a pretty easy chip, you know, to to get up and down for birdie. So that one. From what I could tell, I was surprised how soft it hit into the bank. Like, it didn't seem like it was the hair that held it up. It was like it just hit far enough on it that it didn't repel it directly back into it, right? And I was – we couldn't see it. Like, it, I was surprised it was still on grass. I think it would be different if balls were, like, ripping back into it and getting held up into rough. Uh, that's, that's a problem. But I think a ball that was moving with any kind of speed would have found the creek. Of course, it's a lucky break. Um, so I, I don't think they need to shave that bank tighter just to make sure every ball goes into it necessarily, though. That was, I don't, that was what a 20% chance that ball was going to stop there. It, you know, it, with one more revolution, it might've rolled all the way back into the water. It's, it's very different from the architecture at Sawgrass. I'm super willing to give them a benefit of the doubt for today too. Like, it's not like they could get out and mow those banks this morning. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, yeah, like it seems like they're it's shorter grass than it has been in years past on 13. 15 other spots. I don't know how Max's ball stopped there on 12. Yeah. That, that, was, that was insane. Rory on 15. Uh, yeah. yeah. So also I said that Cam was laid off. He was over the line. Over the across the line. Yeah. 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 Across the line. Under, under arrest. arrest. <laughs> <laughs> God, we podcast too much together. Uh very quick one from Benny Betts. What club logo, a club I'm sure I'll never be able to afford is on Stu's cap today. I believe that was Deepdale Golf Club. So Benny Betts just uh Give a, Keep a shout out to our our friends in the Northeast. There, Keep make, follow some of TC's bets, and you might be able to afford that one. Uh, That's exactly eventually. right. How's big. the how's Stu, the Stu battle today? How's the big parlay looking, TC? You know what? Not bad. Not yeah. bad. Uh, Hideki's kind of. We need something special from Hideki to make the cut yeah. tomorrow, and then. But overall, I'm pretty pleased. Would you say? I mean, DJ is a fellow stakeholder. Yeah. No, I think it's well, about half the guys under par. A couple guys, one or two over, and then. Our our boy Decky is is four over, which is kind of dragging us down. So we we need something special to happen. But God, if we get all all of those guys to make the cut, I mean, it it, it could happen. Just set your watches, guys. I, I also want to give a shout out to uh, our new partner, of course, at FanDuel. Our boost hit. So when round hit, one is complete, hit hard. Yeah, everybody expect a good payout there. But be on the Hell lookout. Yeah. yeah, Tiger was what one under through three. That's right. So. 
That was Huge. an easy one. Massive birdie on on one today. Yeah. Uh, also, all the people in the comments accuse me of being drunk. I'm dead sober. I wish I was drunk, but uh, <laughs> I, apparently, I'm, I'm, this close up's not doing me any favors. Was what I've heard, but I, I, I'm not been able to partake with the boys. I think you're. I think you're doing fine. No, I wouldn't worry about them. So, like, the uh, it's your question too. The stack and tilt. Rick D's top forty play is doing really well. Yeah. Well, so we're in the mix. You know, it was all so my, all my LPs and I so stupid was like seeing the line actually move on that what was like a 12 person parlay <laughs> like the line yeah, came down so much there's so many people tailing that it's gotta be huge if that hit in, in week one yeah it's the cool. line went from plus 100,186 to like plus 67,000 like people were <laughs> crushing it <laughs> What do these guys know that we don't? <laughs> TC's all over this. All right, Cody, let's let's bring it home. So this is uh something Cody something Cody and I uh I I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. I've been trying the whole show to figure out which way to move my hat to straighten it. I keep making it worse. Oh, dude. And I, I can't with the headphones on. I I had hey, to we we... Yeah. Go ahead. We haven't talked ROM at all. Are you guys buying or selling on ROM for tomorrow? I feel like tomorrow we're gonna get to the, we're gonna get to Rom. We'll have a little more clarity on what's going on, but I, I I'm not not impressed. He sounds very weird, very weary in front of the microphone. He just doesn't have the same joie de vivre. Uh, he he just seems a little doesn't he seems a little bit like a, a lesser version of himself, which sucks. Why, why do you everybody. think that would be? Why, yeah. why is yeah. that? Truly, it's just every every interview. It kind of feels like he's like he's a little guarded. He doesn't want to really oh. say anything, and it's just. When you also don't go out and like play well, it's just it, it's a massive L for everybody. Wish he was up there with, wish he was up there with, uh, with Scotty and Bryson. Yeah, it's always got the Dontrell Will attack. Do you guy. know who's up there with Scotty? Uh, that somebody that I did not see this coming fired a 68 first round back, first first round of golf back in like nine months. Dan, Dan Will it? How about that? Will it or won't it? Uh, can we? Can we I feel like we should talk about Tiger a little bit? Maybe Tiger Woods. Uh, sure. What do you want to talk about? I mean, the dude hasn't played a full golf tournament this year, showing up at 35 mile an hour gusts and just executing crisp, crisp shots, awesome chips, scrambling, making the putts. Like that's the that's the main reason I was selling Tiger coming into this. Is like, yeah, he might hit some good golf shots, but I don't know if he's just going to be able to pour in those feely outside the hole six footers and. One under par uh, as he's getting ready to. Did he finish thirteen? I, I had to step out for a second. You're getting ready to play he fourteen. He did finish um, thirteen. Made 13. Par. Five holes left. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like that's what I should go out and watch tomorrow morning. That, I don't know if uh, how uh, how big the crowds will be early on, but I'm, I'm yeah. Not, you should I'm go out there, watch happen. that, and then watch watch him uh, watch watch Tommy a few groups later. Mm, good one there coming go. up too. Uh, Tigers up and down on twelve was filthy. It was so Gross. good. He he's kind of just got that weird that little tiger stalking thing going on like he's really feeling himself around the greens right now it just kind of looks like he is uh, a weird bit of confidence it it i mean i don't know how many times we can we can say it of just like just saluting just th this legendary talent that is able to channel it for this tournament right if this was beth page right now if this was pinehurst if this was true this would not be happening it's this place and he manages to do it on nothing but rust and uh it's just remarkable here, here. I, I yeah, just, like I think the one spot I was a little surprised with was when he tried to shove that ball into that pin on ten. Yeah, he got up and down from yeah, the bunker. That was, that was kind of a that's something Tiger wouldn't normally do. I don't think like that's not a green light pin. Um, but you know it's uh and guys, great honor that or great great tribute from him. He hit it down to the what we've renamed the Hertz counter down the <laughs> left side of two, which was TC. Really, really cool. ZJ visited that today from eight. I was trying to make a shortcut down the left side of two to catch up, and I I, I got held up because ZJ had to flip uh, punch one back from uh, into eight fairway. Your captain. I, I, I watch way too much of ZJ's conversation with his caddy on twelve. You can take take all that I, all I, that away. I, I'm, my brain's fried. I'm just going to not talk for a little while. Okay. <laughs> uh, Cody, should we bring it home here? Let's do it, buddy. All right, we are going to. Uh, this is this is spurned on from uh, TC being apoplectic about some of the mock uh, champions dinner menus that were out there. I, I loved listening to that on the happy hour. TC just going off about how bad everybody's selections were. So we said, you know, we're gonna we're gonna stick our own necks out. We're gonna put our name on some stuff. Cody and I are gonna go first. 
I think maybe we'll have Randy's tomorrow, Solly's on Saturday, and then we're the main event. TC's will be Sunday. He's sourcing all corn, all kinds of fake ingredients right now. Uh, Cody, you want to go first? Uh, your honor, sir. Oh, my honor. Okay, here's 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 what I got cooked up. I don't expect anyone else to even like this. This is kind of like where where I think we got to start from is like I'm not trying to show everybody how much I know about food and wine with this menu. I'm just trying to pick my wow. favorite thing, my favorite things to eat. So we're gonna start with the uh, with the Asian Caesar salad, which you guys know well. That was only served for like two months at Band and Trail <laughs> at the clubhouse. We've been like seven years ago. They made this Caesar salad. Every time we've gone back, Randy and I have asked for it. Nobody can seem to find the recipe. We've we've reached out privately to Band and Management, tried to find a recipe, can't find it anywhere. We'll track it down. If anyone can do it, it's probably the Green Jackets. Uh, we're also going to go with some cheese curds in homage to my home here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My favorite cheese curds down the road at Cafe Hollander, uh, in, here in that Milwaukee. That was the place he took me. That place it is was. excellent. Dude. That's exactly yeah. right. Uh, we probably shared a, a curd or two together. We did. Main course, we're going, uh, up Oakland Avenue. We're going to Oakland Euros, uh, and we're going to get some chicken shish kebab, uh, pita, hummus, chicken, lemon, feta cheese, tzatziki, a little bit of rice on the side. Again, this is like a, this is like an $11 dish but it, it is truly my favorite thing in milwaukee it's so freaking good so uh you know would love to share that with vj and you know f the C charles cootie and a lot of these like a lot of these illustrious past champions i think would really get a kick out of out of oakland euros for dessert uh my wife justine's carrot cake is is my favorite uh a little uh a little homemade cream cheese frosting on that and then for coffee we're going with the block party medium roast uh you know from our guy drew pond at stone creek coffee uh any questions comments concerns there yeah what what if i don't eat meat is uh there, is there a pescatarian option yeah we can maybe get some tofu in for the uh for yeah. the euro for the shish kebab if that if or, that or i just order off the menu right yeah i think that that's totally fine do you think anybody in that room doesn't eat meat maybe phil bubba might still be bubba. a pescatarian yeah um uh, that's I a good point Similar that's to the Volvic thing, it didn't last that long. I, was, I could <laughs> be good, totally wrong there. It's a complete guess. That's a good build, TC. I'll 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 work on that. For uh, the record, I do eat meat. I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> no, it's a good thought. Uh, Cody, what do you got? I gotta imagine there's probably a little bit of meat on this one. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thanks, DJ. I I your yours sounded delicious. Of course, I'm gonna start with a nice uh we put down charcuterie board, but it's actually gonna be a table. It's gonna be a grazing table, <laughs> assorted meats, cheeses, fruits, <laughs> nuts, and of course some spreads. I, I'm a big fan of fig. <laughs> But NATO these are country. only hand selected from NATO countries. That's I'm drawing the line. NATO countries. What do you think about that? cocaine? Mitch McConnell's. Uh, he called out NATO today. He said that the Canadians aren't pulling their weight. Are he gonna... did. I'm a little worried because uh, Canada just invested like ten billion dollars in the NATO like two days ago. So I think Mitch, you know, he's he's he needs to retire officially, not like in the year 2028, but. Uh, I feel this. I'm excited what? about the grazing table, though. <laughs> the grazing table. I love it. Uh, okay. My my first course is going to be a, a Lebanese lentil soup. It's, of course, courtesy of my uncle, Zach. Uh, his name is redacted there because my uncle, Zach, is a long-term, uh, long-time interpreter that I had overseas, traveled across multiple countries uh, with me, and he's actually still wanted by ISIS. So I can't put his real name out there. Uh, but, of course, you we're going to have some homemade pita chips uh, with that yeah you think you're gonna get him into the kitchen for this i hope okay i hope he cody, passes a background check but yeah I cody hope. cool to see your you you honoring your uncle that's, that's <laughs> yeah exactly wanted. i had an uncle that was that was wanted for <laughs> that's what i was thinking too acquitted though uh, we're kind of we're kind of echoing with each other a little bit here I, I do i i understand the you know, lebanon's not a nato country i was just uh, at strictly at the first course <laughs> everything once you advance there it's a coalition of the willing uh you know and and we we open it up we we're widening our borders here when we get to the main course tc i'm sorry i also went with a couple meat options oh that's fine uh, uh right, a new york I, strip I, and yeah. of course a, a ribeye option uh, I originally was going to go uh, from a, a meat proprietor that is uh, near and dear to my heart. That's Little Belt Cattle Company out of the great state of Montana, except for they're actually being canceled right now. Mm. Or people are attempting to cancel them because uh, one of their co-founders is maybe is is not saying some truthful things. Maybe not. Who knows? But if you're you're tied into Montana politics, you might know a little. But instead, we're going to a uh, former 175 Ranger. Got out Ranger Cattle Company out of Austin, Texas. Amazing meats. You can get it at a lot of uh, 
restaurants, steakhouses in Austin. So is this, sides, is this Wagyu? Is this prime? Th this is uh, American Wagyu. So he okay. he's, you know, went to college. He served in the military, then went back and, and went through a uh, egg program at Texas A&M. Uh, probably the only good thing that came out of A&M. Uh, and then actually went over and went to Australia, spent some time in, in Japan and brought back actual like, you know, some DNA. And then has been has his own little cell planting, whatever. I, I don't know how cows do it, but uh, he's got some America, American Wagyu going. You're going to get some seasoned frites, uh, cream corn, courtesy of my wife, and then some uh, some Brussels sprouts the way that I like them. A little bit of mustard in there. And then, of course, dessert, Montana mud pie. Hopefully, uh, people have had that before. But if not, it's it's delicious from Montana's best export. Uh, and that's Wilcoxon's ice cream. This actually, this sounds great. It's a good menu. That, that's that's good stuff. For somebody that's just been chowing on cold chicken sandwiches and pimento <laughs> cheese, I'm really fucking hungry right now. God. Yeah, but they're cheap. <laughs> that's true. Well, that sounds like a, a good reason to end it. Solly, thanks for hopping on. Cody, thanks for running the ones and twos. TC, thanks for joining us with a heavy heart. Uh, you. Masters, you know, it never disappoints, man. It, this was another another fun one. I'm, I'm excited for... We've got a lot of golf tomorrow. left. We don't have a full... We didn't get a full of day of golf in. We got, you know, we got a lot of golf left. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Guys, Here's tomorrow's going to be a long day for you. Guess what? I'm actually calling... I'm, I'm calling in. I'm, I'm not going to be here tomorrow night i got a, a big date it's actually father daughter dance night for me so huge good, good luck with the show i'm going to be wrangling three little girls trying to i'm sure dance to a lot of taylor swift well we Is will scotty uh, winning at the end of the night tomorrow uh yeah i would say yeah. yeah no i think so i would say yes it's only going to get harder right we didn't even talk about the no. weather isn't it supposed to blow like gusts it's, of like it's going to blow hours? similar to this afternoon like pretty Pretty much identical conditions this afternoon. Probably a little bit drier. Pins I mean, will, rise pins out will certainly wind. be harder tomorrow. I yeah. bet. I mean, yeah. I, they'll put up on 16, up the top shelf on 16. They'll probably go to the back tee on four. That's a change. Um, the, you know, probably mow be, some of the surrounds down a little bit too, right? Yeah, I, I think it's gonna get it's gonna get gonna get nice tomorrow. Hell yeah! Well, guys, thanks for joining. Cody, enjoy the dance tomorrow, and uh, we got a, we got a long one. We're so early in this. We are so early in this. So thanks thank for you all for tuning in. For tuning in, we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers. And thanks for all the kind messages, people. <laughs> Seriously, Keep appreciate it.